Hello mates and welcome to the Baron Reviews, with me the Baron. Today's game is VR Vacate the Room, an escape the room game for the Rift and Vive by developer Hoshi. Vacate the Room is a straight up room escape without any bells and whistles, backstories or anything like that. There are two escape rooms to play, the main game and the X mode, but they're essentially the same room and items, but the main difference being the X room has the key items and order of puzzle completion jumbled up from the first room. The difficulty is tricky, but not too tricky, and completing the room is more about being vigilant and looking in every small space than actual puzzle or logic solving. For that reason, it was kind of nice being able to get through the room without getting too frustrated by hitting any brick walls. The only exception to this was in completing the secret ending puzzle for the X room, which has a difficulty scale that is way out of left field compared to the rest of the game. And this puzzle was the only one that had me completely stumped to a point that I had to concede defeat and look up a guide, and even then I didn't fully understand how the solution was being reached, so definitely left me wondering why this puzzle was so radically hardcore compared to the rest. Visually, the game looks nice, but nothing to write home about. The graphics are simple polygonal shapes with decent textures, but nothing spectacular. Even though there's no graphical elements with a wow factor, you do get a good sense of space and confinement in the room. There's no music in the game, but the audio is good, despite being quite basic. The sound effects have a great echoey reverb to them, adding to the atmosphere of being in a squashed metallic cell. Some of the sound effects are a little comically misplaced though, such as dropping a piece of paper on the floor makes you sound like you're dropping a chunk of metal. The game is listed as Vive only, even though it can be played on a Rift, and in fact you can even see the touch controllers in your hands. Being a Rift player, one thing I did notice was the touch interaction could be a little bit niggly at times when picking up objects. I'm not sure if that's because the interaction in the game is just a little bit niggly in general, or if it's the fact that I was using the unsupported touch. Generally, I found every now and again I would try to grab something, and it would kind of sticky drag and drop, as well as sometimes it could be tricky to pinpoint where the exact focal grab point is on the controller that you're seeing in the game. This could be remedied if the developer included a little pointer orb on the controller display, kind of like how they do it in hot dogs, horseshoes and hand grenades. It also might be nice if you saw your hands instead of the controllers. The game has no locomotion whatsoever, and therefore full room scale capability is essential. Steam recommends a play space of 2 meters by 1.5 meters, and that's about right. There are points where you'll be stretching to reach every nook and cranny in the room, so if your room scale is blocked off by any real life wall, then you literally won't be able to complete the game, so be warned. But as for the room scale itself, works great. It's kind of nice and refreshing to get into a game and not have to worry about teleporting or moving around unnaturally with a trackpad. After a while I found myself getting into the zone where I was digging around the room for clues and I was so into it with the room scale that you kind of momentarily forget you're playing the game. And a VR, that's what you want. Needless to say, without locomotion, VR sickness is non-existent. The current price for the game is great at $5, but there's one important factor to consider when weighing the value. The game is extremely short. I finished the main room in literally about 20 minutes. After that I went on to finish the X mode in about another 20 minutes. The only thing that held me up was the secret ending puzzle, which was about another 20 minutes of being stuck and unsure what to do before I had to give in. On top of that, the game essentially has just one playthrough to it, since after finishing the game you're going to know how to complete all the puzzles, so just something to consider. I think 250 would be a more on the ball price tag for the amount of content to vacate the room, to which I would happily snap up any sequels that came out. Though, in fairness, I guess you could attribute the one-off entertainment value of this game akin to something like renting a movie. So that's it from the Baron. If you're interested in this game, you can find it in the link below. And if you like this review, please remember to like and subscribe. Until next time, cheers.